There might be an interesting opportunity in China. First off, read this disclaimer carefully. Then do your good deed of the day by liking and subscribing. So, we do find China in south, uh, but uh, within the Asia region, it's in northern Asia. So China is here, 24-ish percent here from the 52-week low, 22% away from the highs. So let's start here with the weekly data points and we go way, way back. Also, this is all the history for the FXI iShares, China Large Cap ETF. Uh, the thing is that uh, the Chinese stock market is way, way, it's far away from the highs. So the market has been repriced for sure. That is pretty clear looking at this chart. We are historically rather low. Uh, if we zoom in a bit here, there, you know, the, the chart doesn't look that good. Uh, on the dailies, it gets a bit more optimistic because we do have a double bottom here and there. So there's a double bottom in play right here and right now. We do see that the bulls are buying today. You can see here on the five minute, minute shot is that there's something afoot. Um, doesn't have to mean a lot yet, it's still early, but we have seen a big fall already. Uh, looking at the chart here, the Chinese stock market, uh, long term it moves in these massive cycles, and also short term there's a tendency for the market to just rally, pull back, rally, pull back. So after a pullback, the probability of a rally is relatively high uh, in the Chinese uh, market. Yeah, when we look here at these other indicators, uh, RSI and PPO, we are at a key level. Um, if we zoom in a bit, like uh, also on the weeklies, this same level was reached back here. And then you did get a pretty decent rally. Let's measure the rally from the low to the high, 11%. But there was also some volatility uh, to the downside. Looking at the dailies. Yeah, uh, the current RSI level is also the same here. So you have a, well, you actually have a bit of a triple uh, bottom on the RSI. So that corroborates the double bottom on the, the chart itself. Looking at the purple, yeah, 20 daily moving average PPO. We are at the key support level. This level was right, reached back here. Let me zoom in a bit. It is uh, here. That also resulted in a rally, but that rally, well, you know, it was given back, but a rally is a rally. So in my notes, I do write double, double bottom. Um, and um, also on RSI. So uh, corroborating data. D for daily data points. And I think I will give the bulls... Mm, let me give them a six on this one. It's a pretty decent uh, double bottom. The nice thing about a double bottom is that it's also pretty clean for putting in a stop loss level. There's recently been a few double bottoms here, but that is just sometimes the market will will have recurring patterns, uh, especially in a time where you have seen moving averages break down. Then the moving averages do lose uh, pre predictability. And, you know, to a large extent, what happens in the market is a function of, uh, you know, psychology. People people spend, you know, real money and um, patterns, they do, they do play a pretty big role and can become self-reinforcing in both directions. Looking at the seasonality, to the left here, over the last five years in green, seven years in blue, ten years in red. Pretty interesting. This is a nice uh, trend. Overall, it's bullish into December. Uh, a bit erratic, uh, for sure. Looking at the table view, we so far have a 15.5% loss for August. That is the worst August on record. So the probability of more loss, it's sort of not there. Only if, you know, this is the, going to be like an even worse August. But you could make a case that a lot of bad news is priced into the Chinese stock market, so it might warrant a bit of a rally. Uh, if you look at September, there's been some nasty Septembers. Yeah, also some bullish ones. 
recently it's been a bit of a bearish month. So the seasonality here is not, uh, it's not overall that bullish. Uh, if you look here to the left, you see that uh, the Chinese market is very erratic. So there can easily be rallies within a month that ends uh, bearishly. So the Chinese stock market, it's very tradable, but it's messy as well. So minus three here in, when it comes to the seasonality. Um, let's look at the fundamentals. Uh, so I, I am comparing the emerging markets ETF, EEM, with FXI, the China ETF. Uh, if you look at performance, uh, year to date, China is massively underperforming uh, the EEM. Beta 0 0.74 versus 0 0.44 for China. Um, 2.3% yield in emerging markets, 2.77% for China. Looking at the holdings. Of course, we need to look at the price earnings ratio. So 10.53 here for emerging markets, 10.62 for China. So pretty similar price earnings. So here you can see the number of holdings, pretty huge difference. Uh, when we look at the sectors, uh, finance is the biggest in both, uh, then a lot of tech. Uh, looking at the country breakdown, you do see that China is a pretty big chunk of the EEM at uh, approaching uh, you know, 27%. Let's quickly look at the chart of EEM. EEM. So let's get uh, the chart like that. So here we have the EEM chart. So also here, look at the dailies. There's a bit of a double dot bottomish pattern on the EEM, EEM as well. So here is the EEM long term history. We are significantly higher though on EEM, but FXI um, we are much lower. So when it comes to the fundamentals, the yield is pretty pretty decent. So when it comes to giving the bulls a score here on the fundamentals, man, it, it is repriced. I do think it's um, it's an interesting case, at least for a trade. Yeah, let me give the bulls a five on the fundamentals. Pretty, pretty decent. Now let's look at uh, relative performance. So we start by doing some t statistical studies. Let's take the EEM, the emerging markets, and uh, let, yeah, let's actually take Japan, like that. Uh, okay, so these are the weekly uh, correlations. Minus 14% with S&P 500, 92% with EEM, so very strong uh, correlation between these two. And 77% positive with the Japan. Also pretty strong, frankly. On the dailies, uh, we do see minus 37% with S&P 500. So recently, they sort of a bit moved opposite each other, uh, which, which makes them very interesting to have in the same portfolio. Um, the EEM, 72%. Uh, minus 36% with EVJ in Japan. So what happens with the EEM is going to have a big effect on China. And what I do like is this double bottom that we also found on the EEM. Um, beyond the double bottom, there seems to be a bit of a floor around here. So that's, that's pretty good. Uh, so overall, I think we do have the conditions at least for a bounce. Um, ideally, you do get more than a bounce, but um, you know, all big uh, moves, they do start small. Looking at the RSI here on EEM, a very interesting uh, level on a daily RSI. So it's a bit of an inflection point. I see seasonality to uh, the left here is pretty decent. To the right, um, this is, uh, yes, this is the worst August um, for the e EEM. You could, in a contrarian way, say that maybe we are due a bit of a rally. Well, 2015 was a bit worse, I see. But basically, we are we are we are not uh, buying excessive optimism here. Now, let's quickly look at the correlation with um, 
between FXI and uh, the leveraged ETFs. So you have the yin, that is 3x bullish leveraged. And then you have the yang, which is uh, if you are a bear, yang. So having these three times leveraged ETFs makes this uh, a very tradable, tradable market. Long term, 98% positive correlation. Uh, yang only at 2%. So, um, but the yin is pretty good. I mean, this is a very good uh, long term correlation. Dailies. And 98% with yin, yang minus 90%. So even short term, Yang, it, it works, but, um, you know, it could be, could, could have a better correlation, but uh, it is a way, it's a decent way to, to go short uh, China without actually going uh, short. Okay, so FXI, and we take the EEM, long term. So now I am comparing China against the emerging markets. I mean, this has been a very protracted period of underperformance from China. Um, we aren't at like extreme buy levels yet on RSI. Um, let's look at the daily data points. It's an interesting RSI level. Um, a bit of a triple bottom here, actually. A one, a two, and a three. So uh, we are at support, uh, looking at seasonality, it does favor China, at least into early September, uh, then there is some give back. So far in August, this is the worst uh, month, worst August for China in this pair. Uh, September-ish, uh, it's recently been bearish uh, for China. But if you look here at the worst Septembers, then August was uh, good in this case, and in 2022 it was okay. So, yeah, so when it comes to the relative performance score, I do like that triple triple bottom. There's a lot of bottoms here corroborating each other. So it's, it's good. I gave the bulls a six on this one. So we end up with 3.5 in favor of the bulls. We are at the double bottom on the dailies, we also have RSI support. Uh, the great thing about um, double bottoms is that you can be a bit aggressive with your stop loss. So let's uh, look at where a stop loss would make sense. And this is where it is at now. So yeah, 1%, 1% stop loss, that would be 3% with a leveraged uh, 3x ETF. Uh, you do have this low from back here in um, the 31st of May, uh, but then you would have to operate with a 2% stop loss level, uh, which would be 6% with the leverage ETF and 6% stop loss. It's a bit of a, it's, it's a bit on the um, a bigger end of the scale, um, because if you have like multiple 6% uh, uh, stop loss uh, positions that are stopped out, meaning you, you do get that 6% hit, then the, the total hit can become a bit too substantial. So it's not like you can do it occasionally if there's a high conviction trade, and sure you could do it, but um, not often. So let's now get the honorable mention. So I, I did consider making a video about the GDX. Uh, there's a double bottomish pattern on the GDX as well. A bit of a bottom here and also here. Pretty interesting. Uh, so I do think that GDX is it's something to look at. Um, looking at the GLD, DLD, especially on the dailies. When the data loads, we see that we we have this situation where we are below the two hundred the daily moving average, which of course it's not ideal, but we have seen a protracted sell off, so might be a bit of a rebound. But the seasonality here is not really that ideal. September is really red for the GLD. Doesn't mean it has to be red every, every time, but also the GDX, it's it's uh, the worst month for the GDX. So, eh, doesn't really like inspire me to go full bull on G G GDX. But then again, GDX, it is interesting. It's uh, one of those places where you can get big gains or losses, losses pretty fast.
But yeah, we have looked at China. I do think this is a pretty interesting um, bullish uh, trade idea. Um, so yeah, um, there's a double bottom. You can have a relatively tight stop loss level. Uh, if this double bottom were to break, then the bullish thesis is sever severely damaged. So I would then just look for another opportunity to get into to China in like a completely different bullish trade altogether because um if there are bulls out there they are supposed you know to 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 buy uh and avoid any further uh, sell off so yeah pretty interesting setup for china whatever you do of course you do want to be um market neutral and have uh, you know stops in in place one of my, my favorite sayings in the market is that, you know, stops are in and emotions out.